the watch symposium I'm Austin. All right, so do you guys remember how it was a couple of months ago, I think, that I came across an Oris watch at a secondhand shop? Well, I was near the secondhand shop. I stopped by to see what they had. Did they have the Oris? Well, they did. Let's check out everything that they had. All right, first up is this Tag Hour, and we've seen this before. This looks to be a quartz watch, but the tag actually says it's a automatic watch. Worst thing about it, that bracelet. Then you've got another tag hour. This is another quartz and dive watch. Not too bad. And the Oris is still there. I'm starting to think the price is a little too high. I think they should discount it by about $100. Now in the back, that's an Omega. Looks to be a quartz Seamaster. It was a little big. It looked to be about 40 millimeters. And right there, an Omega Aquaterra, 36.2 millimeters. Nice movement, great alternative to a date just. You get an extra 50 meters water resistance. And right there, another Omega. This is uh, quartz. This was a 36 millimeter watch. And another look at that beautiful Aquaterra. I think I'd probably go with a lighter dial, but great alternative to an old man date just all right there you go that's what was on offer at that secondhand shop i think my favorite by far was the omega aquaterra pretty good looking watch all right so i want to make a follow-up video for last night's video link in the description if you haven't seen it i talked about the grand seiko godzilla limited edition that's coming out soon in november and i really can't talk about a limited edition character collaboration watch you know whether it's the ultraman speedmaster or the snoopy speedmaster or the godzilla grand seiko without people somebody bringing up rolex's logo dials all right so in the 1950s up until the 1980s rolex was branding company logos um, Middle Eastern rulers, insignias, team logos, um, event, uh, uh, event insignias and logos on their watches. And I'm not bringing this up because I'm a Rolex fanboy trying to defend what I think was a bad decision. Um, I'm just bringing it up because people are trying to, to draw a real tight parallel between that practice and the character collaborations and you can't all right they're completely different it's not to say I approve and I think Rolex uh, saw fit to stop doing it because uh, they they stopped doing it around the 80s and uh, you couldn't pay them to to put your company logo on a watch and look there's a couple of reasons why we can't draw a parallel between, you know, the, the Godzilla uh, Grand Seiko and, and, and say a Domino's Pizza Rolex, all right? Well, first of all, these weren't sold to the public. Uh, they, were, they were used, at least the company logoed uh, Rolexes were used as rewards for their employees. And look, you know, was it a mistake? Well, it was a little uh, corporate and it was a little bit of a sellout move for sure. Um, but I think the real risk was the association that people then can draw from these companies and Rolex, even when there is no association. I mean, what's the association between Rolex and Domino's Pizza? Uh, it's nil. But they had a deal and in that sense Rolex by allowing it sort of sanctioning it, sanctioning it in a way tacitly approves of the company it sort of legitimizes the company and I can see why Rolex didn't want to do that anymore and look I've always said that you've got to be really careful who you associate your brand with and the deals you make and that's why I think it's really dangerous for companies like Grand Seiko or Omega to willy-nilly uh, get in bed with, um, you know, these characters, so to speak. And uh, 
And, and I think that's one of the reasons why Rolex probably stopped doing it because, you know, if you really want to strengthen your brand, you, you really have to, well, protect it. And that means limiting all sorts of associations, whether they're real or perceived. And, uh, you know, does Rolex, whether it's, you know, a, a tacit approval or just, uh, you know, or just a faulty association between people who happen to see the watch. Do they need to be, you know, legitimizing uh, uh, political leaders or oil companies or fast food companies? No. So I think, was it a mistake? Yes. Uh, is it equivalent to what Omega and Grand Seiko are doing? No, it's completely different. All right. Um, but that's not to say I approve. Now, these watches are kind of interesting. Would I want one? No, but they certainly have a story. And, um, you know, hey, I would want one, a, a Comex a Sea Dweller, that's for sure. 5514. Yes, I, I would definitely buy one of those. Do I want a, a Domino's Pizza logo uh, on the dial of my watch? Hell no. Uh, I don't think that's interesting or whatever. I, I uh, that's somebody's old service reward. Great job, but I don't want it on my wrist. Uh, there are a few I could probably go for, but uh, the most part, for the most part, I think I would limit it to Comac style Pan Am. I wouldn't mind Pan Am. There was a, a I saw a picture of a Pan Am Daytona. You know the 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 connection between Pan Am and Rolex is pretty deep. I mean, we have Pan Am to thank for the GMT, right? So uh, anyway, sin of the past, yes, equivalent to what Grand Seiko and Omega are doing, no. Link in the description, check out an awesome thread over at the Rolex forum. And it's it's all about these, these logo dials and picture after picture of them, entertaining stuff and uh, some great looking watches in there. Anyway, let me know what you think. Take care, thanks for watching, see you next time.